Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of 3D Printing Thursday. To start us off with today's video, we'll take a look at two versions of a custom automotive control device that were printed on a MarkForge system. There are no design differences between these prints, and they were not modified after printing, so at first glance it looks like the only difference would be that one was simply printed without supports. But appearances can be deceiving, and if we look on the hollow underside of these parts, we can see that supports are present for all needed geometry. Like the title of this video implies, we use the MarkForged Iger slicing software to manually remove some of the supports on one of the files before printing it. So on today's episode, we'll take a look at how you can use Iger to customize the supports of your own parts. So here we have a completely sliced and ready to print version of the automotive control file we just showed. Now, generally, if your part has steep or overhanging geometry, Iger will automatically toggle the Use Supports option under the Settings tab, but it's important to note that you can have this supports toggle disabled and still customize where your supports are placed. It will generally be easier to leave this option on if you are only going to remove a few supports from your part, but if you will be only placing a few support columns and know exactly where they will go, then this could be turned off. As you saw in the intro, this part does have quite a bit of overhanging geometry on the hollow side and we'll want to keep that, so we'll leave our supports toggle enabled for this example. To get started with customizing our supports, we'll want to go to the internal view of our part to see all its tool pathing and layer slices. Next, we'll turn off the display of our supports to get a better look at the 3D view of our part. For this geometry, we're going to be removing supports from both the upper body and these four channels where interface hardware will be installed. These areas overhang at an angle slightly over the value that Iger identifies as requiring supports, but not to the point where they simply would not print without them. To start off removing supports from the main upper body, we'll first select the geometry that we want to remove supports from on our layer navigation bar. Only the part geometry itself needs to be selected, and not the entire support column. With our geometry selected, we'll open the override menu here, and select the No Supports option. This adds an override group that we can reference and modify at any time. From this group, we'll click on Add Sketch to create the area that we want to remove supports from. There are several shapes that you can use to draw with, and once you have your sketch, you can change its size, move it around, or even add and delete other shapes as you need. We've sketched a large circle here to indicate we want all supports from this area removed, so we'll finish our sketch for now. If we needed to change the size of this group to encompass more geometry, we could do so with the layer navigation bar as well. Next, we'll perform the same workflow of selecting layers and adding a no support override to what we selected. Like I mentioned, we'll be removing supports from each of these four front channels, and while we could add circles for each individual feature, we'll just make a quick sketch and add a large rectangle to cover what we want. Don't forget that if you don't see the results you want, you can easily select any group you've created and change the parameters with the edit sketch option. With everything we want in place, we'll perform a quick reslice of our part, and once the automatic process is complete, we'll take a look at our results to make sure we have what we want. Using the part and support display filters can be useful for visibility and locating what you want to see. The last task we did with this part is to remove supports from the small bottom mounting features. Now these do have direct overhangs, so it's not usually a good idea to turn off supports for something like this, but with such a small feature, the printing process will be able to bridge the gap enough while the job runs. Now that we have our part, we can start to finalize the printing process from here. So the raw footage for this walkthrough was only about six to seven minutes long, and as you can see, these small changes cut around an hour and 14 minutes of print time, so I'd say that's a pretty good exchange without any actual design modifications. Like I talked about earlier, you can also use Iger to add supports to a part, so for the last section of this video, we'll run through a quick example of that. To do so, I've brought up this slice upper half of a T-Rex skull. This is a purely cosmetic piece, 
So we're printing it at a 50 micron layer height, which will give us an extremely high surface quality, but also results in an increased print time. So optimizing our supports and reducing material usage can be key to getting this part in hand quickly. As is the case with, well, any animal skull, there are a lot of cavities and overhangs no matter how you look at it, which means a lot of supports inside the part, like you can see here. Because a 50 micron layer thickness means more layers in the same amount of geometry, overhanging features can be a bit more self-supporting, and the only direct overhangs in this orientation are around these two areas. So what we'll do first is turn off supports for this entire part. This could be done by turning off the support slider that we showed earlier in our part view, or by selecting all our geometry here and adding a no supports override. Either way, we'll go through the same workflow as our last part, except with using an add supports override. And when that's all done, we end up with this optimized version here. As you can see, we've added two groups that each have two sketches so that we can accurately tell Iger what geometry we want to support. And to reiterate a point from earlier, you don't have to make the group go where an entire support column would print. You simply just need to have it cover the geometry you want to support and the software will do the rest. And as you can see, the results to our print time are fantastic. Going through this process cuts our print time here by almost a full day and as expected, the results for both halves were very high quality. Thanks everyone for taking the time to watch our demonstration of the Iger Support Customization feature. This is a great option for many parts, especially for those with hard to reach features, such as internal channels, for example. Let us know in the comments if you have any parts you'll be using this on, and feel free to subscribe to be notified for more content like this. Have an awesome day everyone.